just want to really quickly go over what the actual GED test is like. So first of all, the GED test is just one high school equivalency test, but currently it is the only way in Arizona to get your high school equivalency. Okay, other states might have different tests or other paths, but this is currently our only path. So we're, this is the test we're going to talk about. Okay, now, um, there was a new version of the test put out in 2014. And this particular test has four subjects, four GED subjects. Those are reasoning through language arts, mathematical reasoning, science, and social studies. Now, you might see right here from the top of this slide that we say four plus subjects. Why is that? Uh, because the state of Arizona has an additional requirement, a civics test. Um, is also required in order to get your GED credential in the state of Arizona. But before you panic, don't worry, the civics test is pretty simple. We'll talk about that in a minute, okay? But what you should know is that all the tests are computer-based, all of them. Can't take the test on paper unless you have an accommodation for some very specific disabilities. So we are gonna have to get used to dealing with tests on the computer. Um, they are all timed. It, even the civics test um, is timed, but they give you way, way more than you need. That's why it says untimed here. Um, but the great news is you can prepare for and take these tests one at a time, meaning you can just study for your science and take your science when you're ready. Study for your civics and, and same thing. And I, in fact, do recommend that um, you take a test as soon as you're ready for it and not wait till you're ready for all of them because students who do that are less likely to complete. The sooner you start taking and passing tests, the more likely you are to finish your GED. Okay. Now, it's not only the number of subjects that have changed on the GED, it's also the type of test questions you're going to see. So they call that the testing elements. But basically, the idea here is it's not just a multiple choice test anymore. You are going to see multiple choice, but you might also see drag and drop. So what is a drag and drop? A drag and drop is when you go and you click on one thing on the screen, and then you pull it over to somewhere else on the screen. So we've all seen questions like that. Um, but anyway, you're going to see some drag and drop. You might also see some drop down menus. So I'm sure you've seen that on the internet before as well. That's when you'll have like a little arrow on the screen. You click that and when you do, you'll see some options that drop down. So similar to a multiple choice. Okay, hot spots though. Hot spots are totally new. We've not seen anything like that before in a GED test. So the way a hot spot works is you have to click on the right part of the screen in order to be correct. So a really good example for a hotspot question might be like a graphing question on the GED. Okay, You might have a fill in the blank question where you actually have to type in the answer. So here's the good news. Um, if it's a fill in the blank question on the math test, it's usually just a number that you're filling in. If it's a fill in the blank question on any of the other tests, science, social studies, language arts, uh, be aware that spelling does count. It does. So you have to spell whatever word you write in there correctly. Now, that freaks some students out. They're like, I'm really bad at spelling. Here's the good news. Um, whatever word you have to spell will be somewhere on the screen. It'll be part of the information you were given. So just go find out how they spell it and make sure you spell it the same way. Okay, so don't panic about your spelling. Um, and then you're going to have writing on the test as well. Um, the science writing is what is known as a short response. We're looking for about a paragraph of information. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we hit the science test. Um, and then there's an extended writing, a um, full essay, and that's for the language arts test. They're expecting you to be able to do those science writings in about 10 minutes a piece, so about a paragraph in 10 minutes, and that essay in 45 minutes. Okay, so let's look at each one of these tests a little more thoroughly here. Let's start with the language arts test. This is the longest test. You have a lot of time for it, 150 minutes. So if you think about that, that's, um, what are we looking at? Two and a half hours, two and a half hours, long time. The breakup of the type of texts that you're going to be reading has changed a lot. There's not a lot of literature anymore. So literature, I'm talking like 
poetry or books, uh, like fiction book stories. That's not what you're going to see. You're going to see mostly 75% informational text. Good news and bad news. Informational texts are usually easier to understand, but they also tend to be more, a little more boring. So, you know, we take the good with the bad. Uh, but anyway, you're going to have majority is going to be informational texts. That's the kind of stuff you see in the workplace, like memos or how-to manuals or um, like a science informational text or a magazine article, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, and what are they going to look at um, uh, what kind of skills are they going to test? They're going to test your reading comprehension. <laughs> Can you understand what you read? Uh, that's huge on the language arts test. They will take a little bit of time to test your language conventions, grammar, and um, do you know how to construct a sentence? Um, so you are going to see that on there. And then, of course, like we said, there's that 45 minutes to write the essay. Um, uh, and the, the essay is a different kind of writing than what you've seen before. Notice this. It says it's evidence-based. You're not going to be writing an essay like, here's the three things I did on my summer vacation. It's a different kind of a writing. It's one where you actually read someone else's texts, and then you write about what you read. Okay? And so you're going to be analyzing uh, texts, analyzing and arguing uh, using the evidence from the text that you read. So a different kind of writing and one that this class will prepare you for. Okay. The social studies test is the shortest of the tests. You only get 70 minutes, just a little over an hour. Okay. Um, and notice the focus here of the test. 50% civics and government. Um, civics meaning basically how our government's put together. And 20% U.S. history. So what you're going to find is that the majority of this test is about U.S. government. Okay. There's a little bit about economics. You guys know what economics is? Uh, economics is the study of money, like in a big scale, like how economies work and businesses, um, economics, money, okay? And then you'll have a little bit geography, so where things are, you should know where your states are. You should know your seven continents, um, know your four major oceans, okay? So some basic geography. And we'll see a little bit of world history, but really not very much. So we are going to focus what we do in our class on the United States, since that's what the test is focused on. Okay. Oh, can I just assure you of something, though, on the social studies test? And actually, what I'm about to tell you is true, the social studies test and the science test. Here's the good news. You don't have to memorize a ton of social studies information. I don't need you to go in here and memorize Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492. That's not the idea of this test. What you do need to be able to do is read, write, um, and um, analyze information from a social studies perspective. So if I give you a historical article, do you understand what you're looking at? Um, that is more of a skill based than a bunch of facts to memorize. Okay, so same thing true of the science test. You're going to see the same thing. But of the questions you do see, um, we're going to have a lot of it, 40% of it, in life science. So we're talking biology here. Health and wellness falls into this as well. 40% in physical sciences. So that includes chemistry and physics. Um, and 20% in the earth and space sciences. I have to tell you the truth. They call this earth and space sciences, but mostly it's the environment. There's a lot of environmental questions on there. Like think CO2 emissions and the um, ozone layer. And yeah, there's a lot of that. Okay. And again, on that science test, you have two pieces of writing. They're both short. I'm expecting about a paragraph in 10 minutes. Okay, and the one everybody's scared of. Well, hopefully you're not scared of it, and you won't be anymore, especially after being in our class. But uh, the last GED test that a lot of students choose to take, you can take them in any order you want, but is the math. Take a look here, 115 minutes, so just shy of two hours. 
But look at this breakdown. You have 45% quantitative problem solving. A lot of things are included in quantitative problem solving. When I say that, uh, all that stuff we did in elementary school, all those computations like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, all different kinds of numbers, whether they're, you know, um, fractions, decimals, all that's included in there. Number sense. So all, that's like all these divisibility concepts. Um, so we'll talk a little bit. You'll see that some of that in class, but that's in there. Um, you're going to see word problems, rate ratio and percentages come up a lot. And we see geometry and statistics and data analysis. So all of that falls under quantitative problem solving. But then look here, more than half of the test is algebraic problem solving. So like it or not, there is going to be just be algebra on this test. It's algebra heavy. And so we have got to get through um, a lot of these algebraic concepts. Okay. Um, great news though. Um, the first five questions, for the first five questions, you have no calculator, but after that, you will have a calculator. Okay. Um, it is an option on the screen when you're taking your GED test. You will be able to click a button um, for the calculator to drop down on your screen. Um, however, I don't know about you, but I don't like having my calculator on screen. I find it confusing and I have to move back and forth between windows. If you bring in your own calculator, you can use it, but only if it's the right kind of calculator. It has to be a TI-30XS. A TI-30XS calculator is the only calculator you can bring in for the GED. Um, we'll be using them in class. We'll be teaching you how to use them a little bit, um, but it is super important that that is the ca calculator you use and that you're familiar with. And so I'm just going to highly recommend that you go buy one of those. They cost between 11 and 17 bucks. Um, I've seen them at Walmart. I've seen them at Office Max. I've seen them at Office Depot. They're all over the place. They're available online. They're not expensive. Pick up one. Um, get used to that calculator. It will save you in a lot of situations. Again, after the first five questions, you're allowed that calculator. And it's also available on the social studies and science tests, which have a little bit of math on them. Okay, a little bit of a closer look at this writing. Um, again, uh, just this idea, n when you do the short answer on the science, it's going to be about some science thing that you read. And you have to know the scientific method because one of your writings will absolutely involve the scientific method. It always does. A lot of different ways that they can do that. We'll be talking about that later in the class, but um, this is the main thing you need to know on the GED, on the science GED. Um, and then again, we talked about that extended response essay on the language arts, which you get a long time for, 45 minutes for. But there's a lot to do in those 45 minutes. So this is what you have to do first. They'll have you read two articles, okay? Usually what will happen with those two articles is they'll be from two different points of view. So maybe the articles would be on, should we legalize recreational marijuana? So one article will all be pro, pro, pro. Yes, legalize it, and here are all my reasons why. The other one will be con, con, con. No, don't legalize it, and here are my reasons why. And what you will have to do is decide which one of those two is better supported. Be really careful. That's not the same as which one do you agree with. You might disagree with the article altogether, but you think they have better evidence to support their point. That's the idea. And you're actually going to have to write about which one of those articles has the best evidence and why. Different kind of writing than what you've done before. And so we will definitely take the time to talk about that in this class. Um, again, this civics test, this is just an Arizona requirement, but I just want anybody who's stressed out about this to just be very relieved. This test is simple. We just went to a GED training and they told us that 97% of people who take this test passed it, pass it the first time. And the ones who aren't passing it the first time usually um, are either non-native English speakers or they didn't grow up here, so they just need a little more study. Uh, but a lot of these are just common knowledge kind of questions. So 
If you're stressed about it, don't be stressed, okay? So here's the deal. It's 100 questions, okay? Sounds like a lot, but we know all 100 questions. We know all 100 answers. We even have an exact copy of what the test looks like in this class. So mm, you do not need to panic about this, okay? You have to get 60 of those correct at least to pass. And this test only costs $9. And like I said, we have all the questions online, and you'll see them in your Canvas class. Okay. Now, how are the GED tests scored? Well, besides that one civics test, all the other score uh, tests are scored on a range from 100 to 200. So we're used to 100 sounding like a good score for a test, but not on the GED. That's the worst you can do. Okay, 200 is a perfect test, and you have to get uh, a 145 to pass. Now that's not a 45 percent. That's a little different. Standardized tests are not scored percentage-wise. Um, but it is a little less than half. They did tell us uh, at a GED training that it's usually a little less than half to score 145. Um, and then they do actually have special levels of the scoring. If you score 165 on all your subjects, they'll print you a special GED transcript that says you're college ready. Uh, that being said, you can still go to college if you're lower than 165. You just won't have their college ready stamp on your uh, diploma. Okay. How do we sign up? People, students, this kills me every time because I'll have students that I've been with for months and months and they come to me and say, Miss, when are we going to take the GED? I'm like, uh, we don't take it in class, okay? So in order to schedule your test, you have to do it from the official GED website. That's www.ged.com. The test fees, besides that civics test, I know that one's $9, but all the other test fees are $35 each. So if you do the math, Four other test subjects, $35 each. We're looking at $140 total for this test plus the $9 uh, civics test. So, um, but the good news is you can pay for them one at a time too. So you can pay for civic, you know, science one month and social studies the next month and help budget yourself that way. Okay. Now, more good news. It's only $15 for the first two retakes. So like say you take science for $35 and for some reason you don't pass. You can take science again up to two more times for only $15 a piece. Um, and then uh, even after that you can still keep taking science but it'll just go back up to the $35 fee. <coughs> Another thing to know is you do take that test at a proctored testing center. It's got to be at an official testing center. Now there is one um, in Yavapai College Prescott. There's another one in Yavapai College Verde Valley. Um, there's testing sites in Flagstaff and Phoenix. They're all over the place, all over the state. So you can pick when you're on the website, you just pick which testing site you want to go to. You pick whichever one's closest to you. Um, Here's a little screenshot of the GED homepage. It actually looks different nowadays. It has a different uh, a cover. But notice when you come to www, that's what it is, ged.com, you're going to see right here, it says, are you new to GED? Create an account. That's where you'll need to go first. You'll need to create an account first. Um, and once you do that, you'll be able to take practice tests, sign up for your real tests and all of that and we are done i hope that you learned a lot about what the ged test is like i know that i can't possibly cover every single question in a powerpoint video so do make sure that if you have any questions you post them in your question discussion board and your instructor is going to get right back to you